It's late. I should get some rest soon. Oh, he is back now. <laughs> Oh my god, how much time is passing? Holy smokes. <laughs> ah, Mr. Struckerin. I have a few letters here addressed to you. Take care now. Thank you, sir. Mother Illuminata wrote back to me. I hope her response helps me paint the mural. Mr. Struckerin, thank you for your letter. I hope this reply finds you and your father in good health. I remember you both as your father would carry you between the rows of our library in its final years. I also remember your late mother and brother, God keep their souls. While we did have some books that discussed Tassing's past, it's likely they were as mythological as what your neighbors believe. That said, I remember one of the peasants, Tilman Kreutzer, read about the history of the town. I know he died during the revolt, but perhaps his family knows some of what he learned. I'd also say that it's not true that all of Kirsau's books were destroyed by the fire. Andreas Mahler managed to save some, of, uh, some from the flames, God rest his soul. In the aftermath of that terrible night, cataloging and preserving the surviving books was not at the top of any of our minds. Even so, this topic has stirred a memory within me. Several years before the fire, there was a death at Kirsau, the murder of Baron Rothvogel. He had mentioned something about finding a copy of Historia Tassie, a comprehensive chronicle of your home. I had forgotten about it until now because the murder dominated all of our thoughts in the days and weeks that followed. It troubles me now because I recall that the late Father Matthias was also reading a copy of Historia Tassie shortly before he died. We never accounted for either book's whereabouts. They may have been hidden somewhere in the library and went up with everything else. Perhaps Prior Ferenc took it from the Baron after the murder. Ferenc had an interest in books of all sorts, of course, but it seems like an odd thing to do in the moment. Then again, only God knows what he did and why he did it. Miklaus Aberl, Haberl, the Baron's manservant, believed it may have been stolen by the town thief Martin Bauer. If Martin is still alive, I would ask him if he knows where the book is. Hopefully he didn't trade it for a mug of beer on his way out of Tessing. If the man has passed from this world, perhaps his family knows where the book wound up. As for the history of the Abbey, I fear that was also lost in the blaze. However, as sacristan, Prior Matthew learned a great deal about the subject. I have not kept in contact with him, but I know that he is now the Archdeacon of Sion. Once a free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, Sion became the capital of Valais when the canton joined the Swiss Confederacy following the Swabian War in 1499. He is no longer a Benedictine, but uses his family name, Facini So. If you write him soon, your letter may reach him before the snow covers Valais. A canton in the Swiss Alps, Valais became the associate member of the Swiss Confederation in 1529. Please convey my best wishes to your father. He was a good friend to the Abbey in its better years. Despite the violence that occurred, I hold no ill will toward anyone from Tessing. I pray that you have seen better days since that night, and that God forgives the many errors we made. God bless you as well. Mother Illuminata, Abbess of Santa Margarita. Hmm. Hold on, chewing. Sorry. Oh, Esther wrote to me as well. My dear Magda, my parents were glad to hear from your father. Please tell them they wish to hear from him soon. Speaking of printing, your ink was well received indeed. I've made several prints with it. They look lovely on the wall. Elijah has taken to making his own ink from scraps he found around the house after he saw yours. Mother was furious when he spent several fennigs trying to find lapis at the market. She set him scrubbing the floors for it. it took him three days. I'm glad you're keeping busy, even though it keeps you from visiting. 
Father says we'll have room whenever you decide to make an appearance. If you do take over the shop in Tessin, you'll have to make visits to Prague for supplies. Who knows, maybe you'll meet someone here. I've made a good match, too. Before the explosion, there was a handsome man at the synagogue, Simmond, who caught my eye. His father is a merchant, and he's a doctor. He went to the University of Padua. Can you believe it? I'd quite like to marry him, if I can find him again. Anyway, I think you'd have better luck than me. The boys would swoon at a beautiful blonde artist from the Alps. Please keep us abreast of your father's mural. We'll have to come see it when it's finished. Blessings, Esther. Hmm. I'll have to write Esther back tonight. I should head home and check on Dad. Ren says, what you got, Toaster? Uh, I'm eating pizza, like I said. Hey, Dad, how you feeling? Ah, uh, Magdalene. Sitting upright is still a struggle, I'm afraid. The dizziness makes my stomach turn, so I'd rather not eat at the moment. Are you sure? I can bring up something light, like milk or broth? No, no, I can't stomach anything just yet. But tell me, where are you off to? I need to get started on the first part of the mural today, the old history. Mother Illuminata didn't know much about Tussing's early history, but she did give me a few places to start. I'm going to ask Black Till if his grandfather told him any stories. Illuminata said she used to read about the Romans. Hmm. So Baby Till? Interesting. I didn't know there was a Baby Till. Hmm. Mother Illuminata, Magdalene. Ah, oh, fine. Mother Illuminata. Young Kreutzer has mentioned those tales from time to time, yes. He comes by to borrow books now and then. Usually, when he's found something interesting, uh, some interesting old ruin out in the field, you might ask him about that. A pity that ill Peter passed. He knew a great deal about Tassing's earliest history. Ah, oh, well. Can't be helped, I suppose. All things are lost to time in the end. That's why the mural, mural is so important, though. Our history will live on a little longer. Yes, you're right, of course. Glad you're carrying it on, Magdalene. You might talk to Smokey, too. Smokey's still alive? Oh, hell yeah. That guy will never die. The old charcoal burner seems to know more about what's in the woods around town than anyone else. That and he knows gossip. He's always been kind to me when I chat with him. I'm certain he'll know something about the ruins. You may hear something worth your while at any rate. I'll go talk to him. What about the ruins or the mines? I can't just use books and stories alone. I want to explore whatever is left over from the Romans and before. The salt mine and Roman ruins are the oldest parts of Tassing, so it only makes sense to see what they left behind. Oh, you take after your mother. She was always thorough in her research. You always said that's what good artists do, Dad. Be careful, all right. I know the twins mess around near the salt mine, but I don't want you getting hurt. I don't know why York doesn't keep them in line. He's always making trouble, those two. They don't have brains enough to keep out of trouble. I do. <laughs> I should hope so. You're the one running the shop for now, after all. Don't forget your other chores while you're running around town, all right? We still have a household to run. I'll get to them, Dad. Good, good. I'd better get going if I want to do all of that today. See you later, Dad. Good luck, Magdalene. Hmm. Alright, so I guess we need to go visit the mine. We also need to talk to what whatever his name is, <clears throat> Smokey. A pig out here. I must have broke out of its pen. I wonder who it belongs to.
Hmm. If I want to depict the mural as accurately as possible, I have to go down the shaft myself. The entrance is so steep. No one's used it in years. There must be some way to get down there. <clears throat> hmm. If I rigged a rope to the top beams, I'd be able to get down more easily. Hmm. I saw some rope in the workshop at home. I should be able to find everything I need there. Mm, I'll have to come back later. I could go down now, but it might be a better way to find out another way down. Okay. Jack says, I'm ahead to bed. Enjoy the pizza. Good luck later with Street Fighter. Thank you. It's all just a matter of practice. Hmm. Ask Baltus for help. Let's talk to Smokey. Oh my god. Fuck, Shlav is back. Hello. Is there something I can do for you? Knives need sharpening. I'm Magdalene Druckerin. Are you a friend of Smokey's? I'd like to think so. I'm Vokshov. I'm a tinker. Travel around and help people out with sharpening knives, little things like that. Druckerin, are you a printer's daughter? I am. Uh, I'm the printer. My father and I are both printers. Do you sample the wares much? As often as I can. Vokshov, don't. You're going to get in trouble again. What's he talking about? Nothing. Ignore him. Nothing. One can't help but talk to people about all the strange things he believes. He reads all sorts of books, talks to odd folks, gets ideas brewing in his head. Now that doesn't bother old Smokey none. It bothers some other people a whole lot. Doesn't bother me any. Sounds like their problem, not his. Exactly. Sounds like there's nothing to worry about. Fine, you'll get run out of here again. Don't blame me. So, books. Again? Do I want to know what happened? Ah, a long time ago. I got into an argument with some people in town. They told Father Thomas. To his credit, he told them to let it go, but somehow an Inquisitor found out. Anyway, I had to leave for a while. So, books. Strange ideas? Yes, the host, the Eucharist, the bread, the wine, the body, the blood for Christ. Consecrated elements of communion, also called the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. In Catholicism, the Eucharist refers to the bread and wine after they've been tr transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. <clears throat> Holy Communion? What about it? More and more people are writing about rejecting transubstantiation. The idea that the bread and wine of the Eucharist literally becomes the body and blood of Christ. Here we go. Yes? Well, there are two ways to look at it. The first is on the grounds that Wycliffe and Hus rejected it. Using her eyes or senses, there is nothing perceptible that changes in the character of the bread and the wine. I suppose that's true. Good. But there is also a second point. Even if the bread and wine turn to Christ's body and blood, why is it necessary for spiritual communion? We're bound by flesh, attempting to reunite with the light of God through the Eucharist. The act, the observance, unites our will with that of Christ. He is present in us through the remembrance, not the physical act. So what does that matter? Are you saying we shouldn't take communion? No, there's nothing wrong with taking communion as a rite or act. But if you accept what I'm saying, there are other things I'd like to discuss. I'm not listening to any of this. Are you ready to hear why it's important to disbelieve in transubstantiation? Yes, I'm certain this is leading somewhere good. Can't tell if you're being sarcastic, but all right. This all starts with Lucifer creating the world. God was the word, and the word was truth, and truth is light. The light is God's will. God's light contained aspects, what we consider angels, facets of his infinite intellect. One of these aspects separated itself from his intellect and manifested in the darkness as the corrupt will, Lucifer. By what power could a portion of God's will separate from the whole? The will moved itself. God's intellect, being infinite, also contained the capacity to transcend the infinite. To exist outside of the boundaries of God's infinite light, the corrupt will brought into being an equally infinite darkness. Within that darkness, Lucifer cast his false light, a corrupted imitation of the divine intellect to create the world. All material of our world is inherently a corrupted manifestation of that false light. 
We still have a connection to God through our intellect, but it is flawed by existing in our physical bodies. But you still believe we can be redeemed through Christ, right? Well, of course. Finally, some sense. But not in the way you think. Of course not. The way to be redeemed is to reunite our will with God's. How do we do that? Regular prayer, abstentation from material desires, sublimation and elimination of want. That just sounds like being a monk. No, no. Priests and monks are both corrupt agents of the business of the church. They have taken the simplicity of holy devotion and profaned it with pageantry. The saints, too. All this talk of morets and seisha and miracles, they're just stories. The church has led people astray, put hope in people in meaningless rituals, faith in relics. You have some interesting ideas, Vaxlav. Glad you think so. I've spent a lifetime thinking about them. Anyway, thank you for indulging me, Magdalene. Of course. It was illuminating. Until later. Until then. Well, that was an uh, interesting sermon on Satanism I wasn't expecting this game to get into. Nice to see some green this time of year. Warhound is one of the few plants that grows this uh, grows around here. Mm -hmm. Pizza, as it turns out, is really good. Good day, Miss Druckerin. I've told you, Smokey. Call me Magdalene. Hmm, old habits, I suppose. What brings you to my corner of the woods? More gossip? Ancient gossip. I was wondering if you knew anything about the old pagan and Roman mines. The mines? Is this a new interest of yours, Magdalene? I don't see the townsfolk trek out there as much anymore. Last I saw were those two twins making trouble. I know a way in, but I'll be damned if you ever set foot in that if I ever set foot in that place. What are you so interested in over there? The mural in the Rathhouse needs a section about the earliest days of Tassing. The mines are the oldest part of Tassing, and you keep a keen ear. Thought you might have heard something. I don't know about getting down into the mines, but I do know a fair stories about a fair few stories about them. The other Roman ruins around here. The old stories my father used to tell me when he was the burner of Tassing. The one about Mars and Tassia, the nymph. It's always my favorite, though I blame that on my youth. Tassia? Like Tessing? Mm-hmm. Folk named the town after a pagan god, a Roman one at that. I don't mind telling you the tale, Magdalene, but I warn you, it's a bit bawdy. Well, I need something about the Romans to paint on the mural. I'll tell the decent bits of what I remember, but I won't have your father hounding me for any coarseness. Uh, everyone excludes me from the fun. You'll have your fun in time, Magdalene. You just wait and see. All right, all right. So what's the story? The well, legend says that Mars was hunting in these woods and spied a fat boar for the taken. Just pulled back a spear when he heard a woman scream in terror. Of course, the creature ran off and the god was angry at the loss of his quarry. So he tramped through the woods to see why a woman was in the forest and not in the local town. Why would a god be hunting in Tassing's forest? How should I know? Maybe he just wanted a brisk walk. Besides, why should anything the gods do make sense? They're, these were the old days. Spirits and ghouls prowled. I need more facts, Smokey, not folk tales. Every tale has a seed of truth in it, Magdalene. How does it become a story? If you're looking for facts, go find the doctor or the inventor. I'm not a learned man, but I know some things. Stories are one of them. All right, all right, keep going. So Mars found a nymph, Tassia, bathing in a spring with a fat, ugly satyr goading her from the shore. Enraged at seeing the trapped nymphs, Mars, Mars transformed into a wolf and slew the satyr. And in return, well, yeah, Tassia bathed the god. <laughs> Ah, ha, I get it, they bathed. Ha, I did warn you, Magdalene. When Mars left the pool, he dripped onto the ground and it blossomed with flowers and crops. They say that's why this valley's so fertile. Hmm. 
Hmm, we've been growing crops here for generations. People would want a reason for that, even if it was the gods. Whatever the reason, Tassin's been blessed with fertile ground for hundreds of years. So much of what the Romans left behind was destroyed over the years, but I like that they that we still have these tales. We never really destroy stories as long as there are people to tell them. Of course, the Romans left a hell of a lot behind, too. The town is more Roman than Bavarian, really. Well, we are a part of the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> now we are, and not for a lack of trying. Tassing is much smaller now than it was in the Romans' day. At least that's what I make of it. The ruins go deep into the forest and all the way to the old mine. Half of Tassing is built on Roman stone. Take a walk around town. We'll start noticing things. We use their stone to build. The old temple by Satius Shrine has grown over, but the aqueduct runs for miles. Even the abbey used to be an old Roman fort. You can see some of the Roman paved stones under the road. If you, yeah, if you look hard. We may not be Roman, but the town is. Hmm... Tassing has been has been building upon itself for hundreds of years. What a beautiful idea. That's the way of things. Most people don't notice the old stones, too busy in town to notice what's right in front of their eyes. Hmm. Maybe I should go take a look at the mine. I'd like to get a better sense of what things were actually like. <laughs> Nothing will stop you, I see. Well, I won't either. Just keep an eye for any wolves or satyrs you might see down there. Eh? They're still not going to spook me, Smokey. <laughs> Worth a try, though. Best of luck, Magdalene. Be safe. All right, that paid off. So there are two really big things I want to look into. I want to look into Martin Bauer because obviously there was the stolen book and we know that that was a history of Tassing. So we'll go try to talk to him. I need to talk to the inventor guy, I think, to get something we need. To Brigitte. Magdalene, how are you keeping... I'm eager to continue work on the mural. I have so much to do before Christmas. I'm certain it will be the pride of Tassing when you're through. You've always had your mother's talent for art. How's your dad? You're one of the only people who've asked how I'm doing before asking about my dad. I know how it is to be the sole caregiver. Your self disappears behind the needs of the person you're looking after. I worry about you carrying that weight alone. I remember when my dad fell. We cared for him the best we could, but those few months before he passed were a rough time for everyone. But I believe God will pull your dad through. Whatever the doctor says, we need him. God willing, you're right. I'm at his mercy. God willing, amen. Have you thought about what you'll do if your dad doesn't come through this? Dad would want me to keep up the printing press. Wouldn't that be a sight? Are you sure you could handle it? It's a lot to manage on your own. But you're a good girl, Magda. There are any number of families in Tassing would be happy to take you. Someone in mind, don't you? You must mean oats. I promise you I do not. Such a modest girl, your dad raised you right. I mean oats, of course. But as subtle as his father, God rest Otto's soul. Ah, I miss him. I wish I'd got to meet him. Properly, I mean. He made an impression, that's for certain. Oh, the girls around town knew better than to moon after him, though. But it didn't stop some of us. He was Avis from the start. As oats appears to be yours. <laughs> But if nothing ever comes of that, know that you're always welcome in my family, Magda. Kraft's a nice, hard-working boy. He's got a sharp mind. He can provide for a family. I'm not sure we're a good match. Not every marriage starts off on solid footing, but if you pray and work and trust in the Lord, you can find it in time. Believe me. Maybe I'll never get married. Without a husband and children who will care for you when you're old... The Lord made us from Adam's rib because he meant us to be part of men. It would be lonely to never know that fullness of purpose. It's no life for someone like you. You're not the first person to tell me so. It is because your elders are wise, Magda. Trust in our love for you and in the Lord's purpose. In any case, I should get back to the chores. Remember what I said. Whatever happens, you're welcome in my home. Oh, before I forgot, I actually had a question about an old book. Martin is supposed to have stolen it from a baron who was killed years ago. Do you know what happened to it? Oh. I hope this doesn't get me in trouble, but I still have it hidden in a drawer. Martin left it behind when he ran off. He went through all the trouble to take it, but didn't bring it along. Martin was a thief, but he wasn't stupid. I'm sure he'd realized no one would believe would believed he'd come by the book honestly, so he couldn't sell it. Why do you keep it? What was I supposed to do? The Baron was killed soon after, and there I was holding a stolen book. I didn't want Martin to get in any more trouble than he was already in. 
I never read it, though. I don't read well. I could take it off your hands. No one would ever know you kept it. I trust you to be true to your word, Magda. I'd like to have nothing more to do with it, to be frank. It reminds me of difficult times. I've stolen book of a dead nobleman in our home. Perhaps it spoiled our milk and turned our eggs all these years. Here you are. Please don't tell anyone I had this. Ah, Historia Tassie. Oh, it's in Latin. I can understand a few words and phrases. I'll take a look in the evening. Thank you, Brigitta. You're a big help. Of course, Magda. Be well. God bless. You too, Brigitta. Until later. Morning, Magdalene. How's Klaus? Enduring. Even when his speech is slurred, he keeps a cheerful heart. I don't know what life would be like without him. Klaus is a good man, Magdalene. Tassing is a better place thanks to him. He's one of the few in Tassing who hasn't been on my back all this time. What do you mean? Don't pretend like you haven't heard. Townsfolk have whispered shit about me for years. So what if I occasionally got into a few brawls? I'm an honest man. I wasn't involved in what happened to Otto Zimmerman. I supported his cause. I've pulled my weight around here, tilled the soil, salted the meats provided for Brigitte and Kraft. I've done enough back-breaking work for the family. Can't a man just have a goddamned rest? I believe you, Martin. You seem like you could use a respite. Damn right. Right, I've lost enough time to this as it is. Time for you to go. Until later, Martin. Interesting. That went way more well than I expected. I'm glad this family kind of made it out. I feel like they deserved it. Hmm. Where can we go? Ah, uh, Magdalene, how are the hinges on your doors? Excuse me? The door hinges at home, are they in good working order? Uh, well, our doors are still open, so I expect they are. Hmm. Maybe Andrus should take a look at them. Would have asked your father, but well. Anyway, you wouldn't believe how many people in this town leave their hinges to rust. I didn't realize you had such an interest in hinges. It's not my interest in particular. Paul would like to institute a yearly check of all homes in Tassing. What do you think of the idea, Jorg? Well, it's not a bad thing, but I don't see why we need to make it official. Everyone in Tassing helps each other. As I see it, someone notices a house in disrepair, we all pitch in to fix it. To do anything else would be unchristian. But if Paul wants to see it through, I'm happy to go along with it. Makes me feel useful, you know. Speaking of it, I'd better get back to work. Nice to chat with you, Magda. See you later, Jorg. Is there anything in... Can I talk to Eva about Otto? That's Veronica. Oh, this is Clara. Hello, Magdalene, dear. How are you? How's Klaus? Hard to know for certain. One day he seems well, and the next I can hardly understand his words. Oh, Magdalene, I'll keep praying for you both. The both of you deserve the best. Life's been hard enough for you already. Please let me know if you need any help around the house. I'd be happy to help. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. I've been so busy in the rat house, I've let the house go a bit. Not to worry, I'll come by and help. Besides that, we can chat, and chatter makes chores pass quickly. With all my children up and grown, and no husband to care for anymore, I've got to make myself useful somehow. Why bother? You spend, you could spend your days relaxing instead of doing chores. Er, Big York is still in the house, though, isn't he? Oh, yes, but he's a grown man with children of his own. He and Veronica are capable of caring for their, their own household now. Ava's taking care of Oates, and Ursula and Fabian have their own life together. They don't need me anymore. You sound sad. Well, I suppose I am. Thank God that my children are all grown and prospering. But I do feel there's something missing in my life. After so many years of tending to them and maintaining a home, I don't know what else to do. God did give us the Sabbath to rest, you know. Hmm. Jorg has been telling me to rest more, you know. Perhaps these days are my reward, until the Lord takes me. Well, I do want to take some of the burden of the chores off your hands. I'll be over soon, all right? I'll see you then, Clara. God bless you, Magdalene. Okay, so there's no one really here. Though we did get chores handled, so that's pretty nice. Hmm. 
Wait, isn't this Baltus's house? It's over here. Nazio. Ciao, Magdalene. Magdalene, Magdalene. Yes? The cinnamon just arrived for the beer. You're making beer? Well, yes. The copper pots you helped me pipe are part of the process. Aha. Uh -huh. It's for the Christmas celebration. Already, we're barely into November. The Wheel of Time stops for no man. That was the voice I was doing for him. I had to find it. But it's going to be wonderful. Cinnamon, coffee from Ethiopia, cacao from the New World. What language is that? Jesus Christ, he who has the money can do everything. Problem? Of course not, it's your money. Anyway, I'm quite excited about it. Clearly. As such, alchemy is not normally my strong suit. And for all of Knazio's complaints about the cost, the base rye we're using is free. Really? Yes. The farmers had so much rye this year, they just couldn't use it all. Gret made as much bread with it as she could, but she wound up having to throw a lot out. So why not make beer? Nod vaguely. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know Tassing's salt mine? I need to find a way in. Any chance you could help me? Hmm, to get into the salt mine? Yes. You must be on quite the adventure. Ideally, we could rig up a double pulley system to lower and raise yourself in the shaft. But that might take a while. Well, I would like to go in today if possible. Of course, of course. Would a good length of rope suffice? You could brace yourself against the wall of the mineshaft. Are you strong enough to support your own weight? Against the wall? I think so. Excellent. Thank you, Baltus. Of course, of course. Here you go. Do be careful, though. Make sure the ropes are secure. I will. Until later. Good luck, Magdalene. Okay. So we got the ropes we needed, I guess. Uh, who else can we talk to? Uh, I wonder... I guess... Uh, I'm trying to think of all the people that they mentioned. I guess we could try to talk to the old people in town. So like Father Thomas, Attilia. Who else? Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, Father Thomas. You look troubled. What's the matter? I seem to have lost the key to the tabernacle. Without it, we'd have to go without the Eucharist on Sunday. I'm sure I could find a way to get the tabernacle open. The lock shouldn't be that complex. Absolutely not. I won't have you picking your way into the tabernacle. Even for a righteous purpose, I don't like the prospect of it. And why on earth do you know how to pick locks, Magdalene? All women do. It's just a matter of being a good wife. We have to be able to manage our family finances. Hardly amusing, Mr. Struckerin. Regardless, I won't have you forcing your way into the tabernacle. I'll find that key eventually. I won't leave Tassing's sanctification at risk. Mm, I'll keep an eye out for it, Father. Thank you, Magdalene. Please, let me know if you have any ideas as to where it might be. God bless you. Hmm. Hmm. Is this going to be Chekhov's key? We find it in the workshop and it's like, a surprise, he did it. I wonder if Sister Amelie has seen the tabernacle key anywhere. I should talk with her. God bless you, Magdalene. God bless you, Sister Amelie. What brings you to the church this time of day? Lighting another votive candle for your father. Small candles lit during prayer in churches, symbolizing a specific offering or request on the behalf of the prayer giver. Ren says, I forgot what she did. Why Sister Amelie just in the wall? She didn't do anything. Um, she is a... She's, she's given her life up to the Lord, and so she was uh, put in this, like, room to dig her grave and pray, and that's basically it. 
Hmm. I was hoping to speak with you, sister. Have you seen Father Thomas's tabernacle key anywhere? You misplaced it. I'm afraid I have not. Everything in the church has been as it should be. Though I did hear two Gertner children come in last evening. They did not rise, but I heard their whispering for a moment. They left as suddenly as they came. Why didn't you say anything? I didn't think anything of it. Many people come into the church throughout the week. This is a sacred space, and the people of Tassing respect it as such. They respect my privacy in this place, and I respect theirs. Why tell me this now? Because while I do not make a habit of meddling, I know those two do. And because you said that Father Thomas had lost his key. Their intentions last night may have been pure. If not, however, it would be Christian to remind them that theft is against the Lord's commandments. Ugh, they're always getting into trouble. Maybe I'll just tell Father Thomas they took the key. There is nothing to prove that the twins' visitation and the key's disappearance are more than a coincidence. And yet, I advise that you do what you feel is right in your heart. She is weirdly logical and, and utilitarian for a nun who has given up her life for her faith. That is fascinating. Basque says, the amount of Catholicism in this game and how it's casually infused in so much of the dialogue hinks me out the same way the imagery about Blasphemous does. It's like allergies by audio intake. I find it very interesting. It's like extremely, yeah, like Roman Catholic church history, like Reformation history and stuff. Just really fascinating. God bless you, Magdalene. I actually like kind of enjoy that aspect of it. It puts you in a frame of reference, like a frame of mind you need to pay very close attention to. Like, you have to, like, the way you approach stuff in this game is just very, it's like from a very different frame of mind than, uh, whose house is this? Oh, this is Voishlav and Matilda. They, she left the nunnery and got married. That good for them. That's so nice. That's so wonderful for them. I'm so happy. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh yeah. So it, like, it puts you in a weird state of mind because you you have to frame everything and like every moral interaction and every piece of like understanding of the world in the game around the very specific time period and the idea of like this is a superstitious religious area. Ooh, I got an achievement for that. Uh, oh, and it skipped the dialogue. Dad always brought anise cakes from Gret to help soothe my stomach when I was ill. Um, what was I going to say? Shit, I totally lost my train of thought because the achievement popped and froze the game for a second. Um, oh, yeah, so it, like, it makes you... It alters your frame of reference for what exactly is like happening at any given moment in the game. Because you have to remember that, like, this game doesn't have the archetypal characters that you would expect. Like, I feel like in a lot of stories like this, in when there's, like, a big church around or, like, I think there's always, like, opposing perspectives in modern stories. We do a pretty good job of showing things like that where it's like, okay, um, you know, the, uh, you know, here's a big church presence in town, but actually... Um, there are uh here's like the the a religious person or he, here's the uh the rebel or you know whatever you want to say uh but the uh this game is like nope everyone's christian except for the jewish people and that's it that's all we get because this is the alps in the 1500s and they believe in all of this very deeply it's just really fascinating oh hey magdalene did you need something I'm a little busy right now I need you to show me how you and Apollo get in and out of the old salt mine. The mine? Damn, Magda, why do you need to get down there? I want to see what our forefathers and the Romans left behind. It's for the mural. The mural? You want to use our secret hideout for your mural? Our secret hideout? But everyone knows you two hide down there. Yeah, but they don't know how to climb down there, do they? It's secret enough. So why should I show you how to get in? Um, because we're friends? 
You told my mother when I cut my hair so I didn't have to wear braids five years ago. I still hold that grudge. Look, I'll show you how to get in the mine on one condition. You help Apollo and me with our next prank. No telling, no snitching, no questions asked. Ha! No way, I'm not that stupid. Then good luck getting down there, I won't help you otherwise. I'll find another way in. Sure you will. Good luck, Magdalene. Ask says, it makes me wonder if the game's developers are expecting or wanting the player to make decisions with modern sensibilities and bump up against the old thinking but push through anyway, or if they want you to slide into that period mentality and live there. I think it's a little bit of both. I think that the game wants you to fully embrace the setting and understand the setting, but also use that understanding of the setting to see where the gaps in the story are. Um, because so far, this has been a very, like, in the name of the Rose style, like, Abbey history monk story. Um... And it's very clear that like our perspectives are shaded by the characters' views of the world and their their views of like religion and faith and just like how things are. And us, there there's stuff in the story we wouldn't understand if we tried to view it from a modern perspective. But coming to this old perspective from the modern perspectives gives us the hindsight of knowing like, okay, well, they don't understand what science is and that's why they think this was a ghost when really it was a person wearing white or, you know, like stuff like that. So it like allows you to solve the puzzles. It's all very interesting. I, I really enjoy that aspect of this game.